Welcome back once again. So here in this video, we are going to discuss about the remaining part of our system design. And uh, first of all, we are going to take care about the infrastructure. All right, as a first step of the infrastructure, uh, we are going to set up our Git repository where we will push our code to the master branch. All right, so once we are merging our code to master branch, or maybe we are pushing the code, it will be deployed in the, in the separate environment, as an example, the staging and production, right? And both the pipeline is going to be taken care by two different set of infrastructure. In our front end, you can say we are going to use Amplify, where we are going to set up our domain, set up our SSL certificate. Then once this is done, then it will be available publicly, uh, which is going to be like HTTPS uh, or www.xyz.com, uh, right? And when our customer is coming to our website, then definitely they can access our uh, backend API also with the help of Cognito or maybe some kind of authentication system we are going to uh, keep in place. And our files, the image files, or maybe some kind of the PDF or etc., it is going to be accessible from our private ST bucket, which is we are exposing with the help of a CloudFront distribution. Right? So customer will come to our website and they can access our ST bucket files as well as an API as well as. So this is this is how the front end is going to be take care, right? And uh, second thing, we have our uh, backend system. As you can see, like the front end is pretty, pretty simple, right? And the backend, what we are going to do, we are going to set up a Git repository. It may be Elastic Beanstalk or maybe some kind of uh, uh, other EC2 instance also we are going to set up. Uh, in, in this case, I'm going to show you like you know, maybe multiple options, right? But uh, let's assume we are going to use Elastic Beanstalk, right? Where once we push the code to Git repository, then it will trigger the Elastic Beanstalk deployment. Then Elastic Beanstalk will be sitting up with the uh, application load balancer, where we are having a kind of setting with the target group, right? And and that target group will be we will be using just for scaling the application, right? So where our each target group will be having like multiple instances in terms of like here we can see we have selected two two EC2 instances. And based on our traffic or based on our certain target groups or scaling rules, you know, it is, it is going to be created the instances. So at least it can be served the whole application um, APIs from here, right? And our application instance is uh, accessing our RDS as well as and our Elasticsearch as well as. And it is, it is kind of having communication with the Cognito also because our user can access uh, both the way one is like uh, the native way and another one is like Cognito. So in, in, in the body cases, we are going to add some kind of the authentication mechanism in, in plus, right? And while we are uh, uploading our files, it is going to be uploaded again into the S3 bucket, right? The, this is a kind of private S3 bucket, right? And where uh, file going to be uploaded from here in the backend, right? And this file going to be accessible to a website as well as. So this is the simple thing. So while it comes to the exposing the backend APIs, then we need to make sure like our backend APIs are totally secure, right? So in that case, we are going to set up the Route 53, uh, where we are going to add some kind of subdomain name that is called api.xyz.com, right? And to make it secure, we need to set up SSL certificate as well as. So uh, with the help of SSL certificate, then definitely the uh, backend APIs is going to be secure, so user can be uh, access their sensitive information without any hesitation. Right, our infrastructure is based on AWS, but already some of you have been requested me in our Discord channel and, and in email as well as. So this time what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cover the GCP section as well as how we can deploy our uh, backend system with the scalability in uh, Google Cloud Platform, along with the RDS settings and etc. All right, so this is the overview of our infrastructure. All right, so let's discuss about why we have Susan go over Node.js. It's a bit disclaimer here. We are not comparing the apple with orange, right? So it's a bit situation just like whatever suits at you or whatever the, uh, the ecosystem you are comfortable to go with it. But there are certainly, I have just figured out a couple of points here, why we need to learn multiple language or maybe multiple ecosystem, which is going to be beneficial for you as a kind of backend engineer. We should not supposed to limit ourselves in one ecosystem because as much as you learn and as much as you have a more flexibility in the different ecosystem, it'll give you a little bit more add-ons to your career. And in terms of when you are lettering your career, then it will give you a little bit more scope. Uh, you can switch between the, between the technologies, right? And here are a couple of things which is I have figured out regarding Node.js and Go, where or when to choose the Node.js and when to choose uh, the Go. Here are a couple of points I have figured out regarding Node.js and Go. 
So both the packages has their own beauty and own scope of like you know, pros and cons. I'm not going to compare just like you know, on the Apple with Orange, but still some of the things maybe we can uh, list that here. Uh, in the Node.js, it has a standard library. It is pretty good and quite uh, wonderful, but sometimes the third-party packages are overkill. So while we are completely dependent on the third-party packages and it is if it is not maintained or deprecated or somehow the third-party packages has some problem, then definitely you need to refactor all these things, which is potentially kind of uh, tech depth for the application. And Node.js transpile to JavaScript. All right, so while we are writing the, the Node.js applications and definitely you can use the multiple languages just like JavaScript and TypeScript, etc. But uh, for running purpose in terms of in server, definitely you need to transpile to a standard version in terms of like maybe ES5 or ES6, etc. And Node.js is sometimes extremely wonderful, just like you know, it's async and it's single traded. It's, it, it can be handled a lot of stuff uh, in terms of when it comes to uh, asynchronous uh, programming, right? In, in that case, like Node.js is wonderful. But the downside is like you, know, you need to handle everything like closing the database connection, socket connections, or maybe some kind of the service connection, everything you need to handle it manually. Node.js garbage collection is uh, a bit tricky while having this cycle of imports. Node.js has a lot of third-party libraries, which is you can use for transpile, uh, just like uh, Babel or maybe uh, ESBuild or something like that. And it has a beautiful feature that is called the functional and modular programming as well. So body programming you can use right here. Some Node.js sometimes it's hard to scale while it's having the heavyweight process. It is extremely expensive. So as an example, while you are encoding your movies or something, all right, then because it has only one single trade, right? So then in that case, you need to split your all this process into smaller microservice so it can be handled in that way, right? So, and for scaling also, you need to use the containerized based system, just like, you know, maybe Kubernetes or maybe Docker Swarm or something like that. And the beautiful thing is like in Node.js, it has a wide range of the framework choices. As an example, it has Express, Next.js, Koa, or many more, right? And it is supporting multiple languages, just like you know, ES6 and TypeScript, right? And Node.js has a kind of easy choice for full stack development. In the Go, it has a wonderful standard library and a documentation which is going to help you to build almost everything uh, for your applications without taking help of the third-party libraries, right? So that means you no need to rely on the third-party libraries anymore. Go is simple. Go is gaining popularity because of its simplicity. It always includes the binary in the build. So that means once you build the project, then you need to just apply that specific binary in your uh, deployment machine. You no need to take care about the dependencies and all the rest of all the things and right after the build in the post deployment. Go has a wonderful concurrency where you can get the benefit of the multi-core CPUs and running the concurrent task. And especially the defer keyword, which is going to help you to close uh, the open connections or the, the clean cleanup of the functions, like while you are running certain operations, you no need to worry about the cleanup or the process, right? You can use the defer keyword to clean up the whole thing. Go has a beautiful functional programming paradigm. When it comes to scalability, Go is extremely easy to particle scale and it's super fast. Here, I'm not going to compare both the ecosystem with each other because both the ecosystem has their own way of performance or own way of make them great, right? Let's understand when to use Go and when to use Node.js. So when our backend system and frontend system is coupled together, then definitely Node.js is a great choice besides Go, right? Because uh, that's not a thing like, you know, you cannot build the full stack application in Go. And Go also has a kind of lot of uh, uh, support and the flexibility with the different, different frameworks. But still, uh, definitely like in this case, maybe uh, Node.js is a great choice. Maybe you can go with like Node.js, with the Next.js, something like that. And another thing, if you wish to build something in modular, and uh, if you have a JavaScript and a TypeScript as a first choice, then definitely Node.js is a the, is the kind of great choice for you, right? And besides that, uh, if you have something planned to just like build a microservice architecture or something like that, then definitely for a microservice ecosystem, Go is a, Go is a great choice because of its communications, because of its scalability and the low maintenance of dependencies. And scalability is a little bit in the Node.js side, uh, it's, it's good, but still you need to use some kind of third party stuff and you need to maintain everything accordingly, uh, containerize, or maybe you can go with the Kubernetes, etc. But besides that, the, the Go scalability is extremely easy because it's producing some kind of the binary file while a deployment process and maintenance of the dependencies is extremely easy. 
if you care about the performance and then definitely the Nudges is not going to be a kind of good choice for you just to go with the Go ecosystem because it has a wonderful concurrency system right which is you can obtain with the help of uh, Go routine and the channels and the similar kind of stuff you can also gain in the Node.js but uh, as you as you know like Node.js is like a single trader and it is using the asynchronous programming uh, where the event loop is going to take care of everything but for expensive process and all then definitely Node.js is not a kind of good choice for you then Go is like there's a kind of alternative ecosystem so in this case you can see like in a bot uh, the platform has their own stuff uh, for uh, or maybe a kind of good reason to select a Node.js or maybe good reason to select a Go, right? Maybe now we have a kind of good reason to go with the Go ecosystem at this moment, right? So let's move forward with our system design remaining part.